Hey guys, it's Caitlin. Today I'm gonna show you how to make my simple gluten-free pie crust. It's so simple and so easy, anybody can do it. Eight years ago, I was the only one in my culinary school making gluten-free pie crusts. Instead of grabbing from the regular flour bin, I had to figure out my own blend of brown rice flour, potato starch, tapioca starch, you get the idea. Fast forward to now, you can walk into any grocery store and find a variety of gluten-free flour blends, which makes this recipe so much easier than it was back then. In fact, this recipe is only five ingredients. It is my passion to create reliable recipes you will not only love, but love to make. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please subscribe to my channel. Now let's make some pie crust. First, we're going to need two and a half cups or 300 grams of gluten-free flour. This is my favorite blend. Now, when it comes to measuring out your flour, make sure you're measuring correctly. I always recommend using a scale and measuring in grams. If your baked goods come out dry and dense, you're most likely using too much flour. If you don't have a scale, fluff your flour with a spoon and sprinkle it into your measuring cup, using a knife to level it off. Next, we're going to add a quarter cup or 50 grams of granulated sugar and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix these dry ingredients until well combined. We're also going to need one cup or 226 grams of butter. If you're vegan or dairy-free, you'll love the Earth Balance Vegan Butter Sticks. We're going to dice the butter into medium cubes, and remember, they need to be cold. This is the secret to pie dough. Now, we're going to add our butter cubes into the dry ingredients. I like to toss the butter in the dry mix to create a barrier between my fingers and the butter. This helps to keep it cold. Begin breaking up the butter into smaller pieces with your fingers, moving quickly. Continue breaking the butter down into the dry ingredients. You'll want to leave some larger chunks of butter to create a flaky, buttery crust. Now we're going to add a few tablespoons of cold iced water at a time into our dough. I'm going to add around three tablespoons and then see if it needs more. We just want to bring the dough together a bit. Give that a little toss and if you squeeze the mixture together with your fingers and it forms a dough, it's ready and you don't need any more water. If it's still crumbling and breaking apart, keep adding a tablespoon at a time until it forms into a dough when squeezed. Mine only needed four tablespoons total. Now, we're going to gently press our dough together. It's okay if it seems a bit dry and crumbly still, we're going to refrigerate the dough for at least 30 minutes to an hour, and in the fridge, it's going to do its thing, the dough will hydrate and come together. But first, let's shape the dough into a circle so it's the perfect shape when we roll it out since the pie dish is circular. If you like to prep ahead of time, like me, you can stop here and freeze your dough for up to six months and then let it defrost in the fridge overnight before rolling it out. Before we begin to roll out our dough, we're going to let it sit at room temperature for five to 10 minutes to let it warm up. It should still be very cold yet workable. Now let's roll out our dough. Flour a non-stick surface with your gluten-free flour. I love using my pastry mat from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. Place your dough down and sprinkle it with some more flour. Make sure to add a little flour to your rolling pin too. Mine is stainless steel, which helps keep the dough cold. Continue rotating the dough while rolling it out to keep it from sticking to the surface. We want to roll the dough out to a little less than a quarter inch of thickness. I'm using a bench scraper with inch measurements to check the thickness. Now let's transfer the dough to our pie dish by gently rolling it onto the rolling pin. You'll want to work quick so you don't tear the dough. Now quickly bring the edges of the pie dough up and into the edge of the pie dish. Cut the excess dough with some kitchen shears. You can use the extras for a lattice top crust or save it in the freezer for another recipe. Begin folding the edges of the crust underneath itself. 
If you have any cracks or tears, don't worry, this is common even with regular pie dough. All you have to do is rub them out with the warmth of your fingertips. Now let's create our beautiful fluted edge. I personally like to create a large design because store-bought pies have a very small one and we put all the effort into this crust, we want everyone to know it's homemade when they see it. So we're going to begin using our knuckle, pointer finger and thumb and gently form the crust edge like I'm doing here. If you have large thumbs, you can also use your thumb instead of your knuckle. Repeat this pattern around the entire edge of the crust, rubbing out any cracks as they appear. By the way, I'm sorry if you noticed my knuckle is irritated. I wash my hands so much from cooking and cleaning that I can't apply lotion because I'm working with food, so my skin dries out and my knuckles are graced with these cracks. Now, let's lock in that shape by placing our pie crust in the freezer for 10 minutes. While our crust is freezing, let's preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Grab some parchment paper and begin folding into a triangle like I am here. After 10 minutes, bring your chilled pie crust out and cut the parchment paper about 2-3 to three inches longer than the outermost edge of the pie. Now unfold the parchment paper and place inside the pie crust, pressing the paper into the edges. Pour in your pie weights or dry beans, spread them out evenly and bake the pie crust for 10 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, we're going to remove the pie weights. This is where the extra few inches of parchment paper come in handy as it helps us to remove the pie weights easily without spilling. Now onto our egg wash. An egg wash isn't necessary, but it adds a beautiful glossy finish to our crust and helps it achieve a golden color. We're going to add one large egg and either a splash of milk, nut milk, or water to the egg. Make sure to mix well. You'll want a pastry brush to paint the egg wash onto your crust. I found using a silicone brush results in an uneven distribution of egg leading to an uneven browning of the crust, whereas a bristle brush distributes the egg wash on evenly. Next, we're going to dock our crust with a fork which is going to help the steam escape. Just make sure to do it low enough so it won't show above your pie filling. Dock the bottom and the sides of the crust. Now begin painting the egg wash on the entire pie crust. Make sure to brush the bottom, the sides, and the edges around the top. Brushing the bottom of the pie will prevent a soggy bottom crust. Do your best to coat the entire crust with a light, even coat. I like to wipe the edges of the dish. Baked on egg wash becomes brown and difficult to get off and will ruin the aesthetic, so wipe it off the dish before it bakes. Time to protect our crust. Nobody likes a burnt edge, so I like to tent the edges with my silicone crust protector. If you don't have one, you can use aluminum foil, folding it around the edge of the pie. Now back into the oven at 425 for another 10 minutes. When the 10 minutes are up, this is where you'll add in your pie filling if you have a filling that needs to be baked, like pumpkin pie. Then continue baking as per your recipe's instructions. If you're making a no-bake pie, like a peanut butter pie or a cream pie, continue to bake the crust an additional 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or until golden and cooked throughout. Now enjoy your gorgeous, golden, gluten-free pie crust. And please don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. By the way, if you're looking for some music inspiration or some great music to cook to, I share all of my favorite songs and playlists on Spotify. Go ahead and search Caitlin Taylor and make sure you add me to see my playlists. And that is how you make my simple gluten-free pie crust. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment down below what your favorite gluten-free treat is. Also, check out more videos over here and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I love you so much and I will see you next time.